great to be with you this morning. Um, as ever, I'm surrounded by uh, pictures, and I've got a few um, few animals down here as well. So I've got an I've got an audience up here with me, um, and uh, today we want to continue in the uh, series on uh, responding to to God's generosity. And uh, during the week, I had my 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 ears cleared out because they've been rather blocked over the last few weeks, and um, and I've not been hearing clearly in my in one ear. And um, but now they've been cleared out. I'm I can hear much much clearer. I can hear hear everything that's going on, and um, and there's a great improvement. And it's the same um, spiritually, isn't it? That we often need our ears um, cl cleaned out. We often need our ears attuned to what um, to what God is saying to us. Uh, and today I want us to look at a passage in, in Exodus. We're going to look at Exodus chapter 3 and, um, and look at uh, think that what, God, what um, God's saying to us through, that, um, through those verses at this time. So it's a well-known passage. It's about um, Moses um, having a talk with God um, and, and meeting him at the, at the burning bush. And uh, Moses is in the desert. He's been looking after his sheep. Uh, and God appears to him in a burning bush. And, God, and, and this is what, what happens, this is what's said. So I'm going to start from verse 5 of, of chapter 3 of Exodus. It says, Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this Moses hid his face, because he was afraid to look at God. And the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites and the Jebusites. Um, and now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I've seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So, so now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I, that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And um, that, uh, that question of, of Moses is, is who, am, who am I? Who am I that I should go, that you should choose me to go and and uh, and release I, the, these people uh, i'm just a, a shepherd in um, in uh, the desert out here who am i that i should go to the king of the greatest power that there is at this time and say let um, a million people go um, who, who am i going to get them out where do i start um, i've got a comfy life here i'm i'm you know, I'm happy in this this work. There's no no major responsibilities other than to to these sheep and to my father-in-law. Um, I've got a nice a nice life. Why why do I want to spend time and money going back to uh, to Egypt? Um, and besides that, it's um, it, you know, they're they're I'm on the most wanted list there. They're gonna they're gonna want to kill me, and um, and the 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 uh, that response from um, from Moses is not much different to the response we often have if God God says to us to do something slightly less um, challenging than going and saying to Pharaoh let my people go and um, and he um, uh, you know he'd also say I think that why am, why am, why have you chosen me we often say why have you chosen me I'm, I'm not worthy I'm not capable enough I'm not um, uh, I'm not strong enough to, to do this and and that, so, that's a, so this reflects some of, the, of what we might say when we're asked to, to go and, you know, if we want to give that money to something or uh, we're, we're sort of feel that we're prompted to give, to do something. Um, as Dave said last week, to do some, some service, to join, to volunteer, to join in some activities, to, to speak to people, to walk across the room and speak to people. The, uh, the reactions we have are not too dissimilar from that. And... Um, and let's let you know if I'm going to be generous with my money, for example, then I, I need to sort of get over these these um, these thing this thought and this these challenges that there are to me. And let's see what God says into this situation, because because God responds to him and he really really actually just ignores um, Moses's um, um, question, because he says to him, God it says in verse twelve, it says, and God said, I will be with you, 
and this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. And he's, he's really saying that, that actually your, your objections as to who you are and how, how competent you are, are are not really relevant to this. I want you to trust me because you will, you will come back to this mountain. You will come back to this mountain with a million people to worship me. And um, if you know the story going forward, that's exactly what happens. So God is saying to him, trust me. But he's also saying to him um, something else. He's also saying, just remember who you are. Remember who you are. And if we try and remember who Moses was, Moses was the adopted son of the king of the richest country in the world at that time. So he, was, um, he had been uh, found and adopted into the, into the family. He was a royal prince. He was the, the adopted son of a king. And um, I'm sure many of you making that, that connection that, that actually that's, that's our position in relation to God. That's our position in relation to, to Jesus, that we have been adopted into his family and we have become um, royal princes. We have become part of the, of the royal family of, in effect, the most powerful um, kingdom in the world. And we shouldn't forget that. So whenever we say, I can't do it, I can't do that, I'm not good enough, it's too much trouble, etc., then just remember who you are. You are, you are royal princes of a royal kingdom, of the most powerful uh, country and kingdom in the, in the world. And, um, and Moses had forgotten that. He'd, he'd, um, he'd let, that, let that slip. And, um, and I, think, I think as well, there's some, some, some people here might be, who are, in, are listening, for example, might, might think, well, I used to be involved in lots of things. I used to be involved in, in God's kingdom and in God's church. And I used to be very, very active. And I've drawn back. I've, I've gone out into the desert to look for sheep, look after sheep, for example. And I think God, God might be saying to some, some people here, um, let's return. Let's remember who you are and let's return and let's get involved and let's see what we can do together because we, we can set people free through you being involved with, um, with, with, with God. And um, then Moses asked some, some other questions of, of God and, and it goes on to say in, in Exodus 3 and verse uh, 13, that Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. That is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. And God is saying that he's giving Moses his personal name. He's telling him what his name is. And his name is I am. And we often translate that as Yahweh um, because um, we're not quite sure how it's pronounced. But because but, um, the, the, the word went out of use because the Israelites were Jews were so afraid to, to say it. But, but it, is the word, it is the word Yahweh that we use. And, and um, God's saying, that's my name. That's how you'll, you'll recognize me. That's, that's what I'm like. And there's two things about, about um, this name and about this question. The first is it's about relationship. The second, it's about differentiation from all the other gods that there are around in the world at that time. That this, this name, this name comes with a load of characteristics, a load of, um, of personality uh, with it. And if you think about it, names do mean, um, you know, they conjure up a picture. Um, when, when people say Keith, it comes up a, a picture of, of me or some other Keith that you know. And, um, and you can see as much as you can um, what, what we're like. So it describes the person. But particularly in the, in the ancient world, it was, it was a real, um, it really gave a, a meaning to what that person was, a, was about. And many of us have names that mean things um, that are significant in, in terms of, of, of personality or characteristics. So God's saying, first of all, it's about relationship it's about knowing me i'm giving you a personal name and i want to have a relationship with you and he's made that obvious that he wants a relationship because he's come down to rescue a people and um and moses equally i think is asking the question because he wants to know what this god is like 
And throughout the, this is the start of a process where God starts to make himself known, what he's like to the people of Israel. And the Old Testament is, is predominantly around, around what, um, what he is like and how, um, how he's going to continue to rescue his people. And supremely that's seen when Jesus comes, because he comes as, the, as God, as the rescuer of, of people, um, and, and coming to show exactly what God is like. And, um, and, and he calls himself I am on several occasions. He uses these same words that God uses for himself. Uh, that's why the Jews were so upset with him that he, he claimed, and he, and he is, <laughs> um, he claimed to be what he is, which is God himself come down to rescue his people so there's great um so so that um that idea of of um identity and of and of um relationship is what this is all about but also it's about and, and god wants a relationship with us as well in the same way as we get to know him but also it differentiates him from all the other gods around he get, he's got a name and there are many gods in Egypt, many gods in Rome, um, uh, many gods um, in Greece, in Persia. Um, and we'd be fooling ourselves to think that there are no gods today. The, the propensity for human heart and mind to make gods out of pretty well anything is huge. And, um, and we are surrounded by gods. We don't give them those names, we give them other names. We give them names like money, they give them names like 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 sex we give them names like like um relationships with people um we give them um we give them team names we give them um um group names we we have we have gods that we can make things that that, that upon which our life depends upon which um give us significance upon which we we rely for our for our livelihoods now some of those things aren't wrong because they're just normal everyday things but if we make them a god, and if we replace um, the uh, the worship of of the one true living God with those, they start to confuse the picture, and that's what they did in uh, in Israel. That um, the Old Testament is full of examples where where they nominally worshipped Yahweh, but they also um, worshipped other gods and went after other gods and did things that other gods required of them to protect gods. They were almost hedging their bets and saying, well, I'm not sure that this, this Yahweh God is, 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 is sufficient, is up to it. And, um, and they're hedging their bets. So I'll try this other God as well and I'll placate them in some way. And, and we, do, we do the same, don't we, actually, um, when you think about it. Because if we don't fully, fully, fully trust, trust God, we're going we're gonna to go after these, we're fooled into going after other gods. Like I'll get lots of money to, to, to help or I'll surround myself with, um, with lots, of, lots of different people, or, um, you know, or I'll rely on, on drink, or I'll rely on some other thing to get me through as well. And, it's, and it's, it's, it's sort of, you know, God plus. And that leads to huge confusion because we're not then fully trusting him. We're not fully um, engaging with him. And um, to give you an example, I mean, I, Jan suggested that we... Um, we gave money to the Catalyst collection, and, and I said, "Well, I'm not sure. That's I think that's a bit too much." <laughs> and um, but she was she was adamant that we that we gave more. And I was acting in a in a way that was influenced by things around me. I was saying, "Well, let's hang on to money. Let's just in case, just in case." And and really, I'm not acting in faith in that way. I'm trusting God, but I'm trusting Him so far. And really, I want I need to trust Him all the way. I need to trust Him with. With all of my life, with all, with everything about my life, and and more and more, that's about me recognizing that he is a, a trustworthy, totally, totally trustworthy. And like he says to to, to Moses, trust me, we're going to get through this, and you will come back here and worship. I need to trust him. That trust me, I'm going to get you through your life, and you will you will get through, and you will survive, and you will worship me because of it here. So. Um, so let's don't think now we're we're free from from all those all those gods, but it's a challenge because we we mix it, and that's where we need our ears cleared in order that we can see and hear God. Sorry, mixed metaphors there, but we can hear Him clearly. We can clearly see that He is incredibly generous, 
and he is incredibly for us and he does want us to, to, so, to, to get through and he is the one that we can, we can look to. Um, <coughs> we need to recognise that he is one, there, you know, he's the one true creator God. He made the world and everything good and beautiful in it. He and he alone is deserving of worship and he is the only source of life and of peace and of meaning and significance for us. And he'll go up to death and he'll go through death and he'll go past death. And he is the only one who can do that. You know, my money can't do that. My appearance can't do that. Um, you know, uh, rock stars that I, that I worship can't do that. Um, my car can't do that. Um, money can't do that. Only he can do that. And I just want to finish by reading um, Psalm 23, because I think Psalm 23 um, just epitomises that it is all about what he does for us. And this God is incredibly generous. So as you, I want you to start, I'll read it, but I want just this week, just think about it and just think about what it says about the incredible, incredible generosity of God in doing all these things uh, for us. It says in Psalms 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.